that's number one. You kind of reset your painful tender to the touch. May I also right. same shoulder length and the other. Hey, everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Real Health Podcast with Brandy and Amir. I am Dr. Amir Rashidi, an a chiropractor, and Brandy is the host and the talent and the gift and my partner in life and business. Yeah, and but you got a else. new title last night. What was that? He got snake the King. new title of the Snake <laughs> King or Snake Slayer. I don't know. I'm going to come up with something really good. We, we're we having a mental health crisis at our house right now. <laughs> I can't even say house. We had a snake <sighs> at the top of the steps. Well, first it was in the boys' room. One of the Our 11-year-old last night two ran, nights ago. ran. Yeah, two nights ago, ran into our room screaming. And he kept going, I stepped on it, I stepped on it. And we, we calmed him down so we could understand what he's trying to say. So apparently he opened the door to his bedroom and this snake got caught under the door. And this is upstairs. In, For the record, in, in as the... soon as we calmed him down and he was able to tell us it was a snake, that's when I started freaking out. <laughs> yeah, so we went and tore his room apart. We couldn't find the thing. By we, it's they, because I would not step foot in the room. Pulled everything out, closets, everything. And there's no snake. So, you know, he's 11. We doubted a little bit. Like we hoped. We were hoping he made up the story. It's the only you know, reason I slept that night. He had freaked out quite badly, but but he's also really brave. So yeah, like I kept thinking, if he had actually stepped on a real snake, he might have freaked out a little more. And then he goes, "Do you think I imagined it?" <laughs> <laughs> and I so. was like, "I hope to God so." <laughs> so then last night, I was walking up the steps. And this thing was staring at me from the top of the steps. So we were eye to eye because I'm coming <laughs> up the steps and this thing is right here looking at me. So I said, I found the snake. <laughs> or he found you. <laughs> and uh, so the boys ran to see it. And obviously Brandy did not. I was still in the living room. Yeah. I was horrified. Uh, can I just back up? Let me just tell you. When he stepped on the snake the first time, I'm calling you out, sir. He had just gotten done doing his evening shower. And I was like, there's a snake. He says, there's a snake. Go. And he said, I'm blow drying my hair. And I said, forget the hair. There's a snake. Go look at the snake. He didn't. Okay, wives who may be afraid of snakes. Are you with me here? Because I thought that was absurd. I love you, but it just shows how courageous I am. Okay, I wasn't we, afraid. I was we'll, like, ah, you know, we'll it's, go it's with a that. snake. It, it'll be there when I get to it. So to finish the story from last night, so he's face to face with this the hair snake. doesn't take long to blow dry. <laughs> It's like Still, 10 seconds. It felt like forever. So, I'm like, it doesn't take long for a snake to go someplace. 12 seconds. Clearly, it was too long because we didn't find him that night. And the only reason I slept is because I thought there was a slight chance he was imagining it. And so I slept. But then last night, I had to get up and I turned all the lights on. I'm like, <laughs> we are not. This is worse than snakes on a plane. And we are absolutely, I'm not walking around this place without the lights on. Okay, but I did get rid of the snake. I took it out, dumped it in the woods. Okay, for the record, he took off his shoe and hit it like 80 times, put it in a bag. I knocked it out. I didn't kill it. I gave it a concussion. It was a mild concussion. And and so he, he, he was... He told him no more TV. For a week, <laughs> go see his chiropractor get adjusted. Yeah, he's going to need an adjustment after that. Stay off social media. For sure, yeah. Snakes are tough. you got to be rough with them. I, I guess. Yeah, you knocked him unconscious, our, put him our, in a bag. Our friend shot his snake 12 times and it was still moving. <laughs> Can't make this stuff up. And then I found out some people actually like to have them as pets and then they escape. And you're like, why would you ever invite like one of... I don't know. Like it, it's a, it's you called it Satan's representative. Yeah. Like, why would you bring that in your home as a pet? Nothing good can ever come of that. I'm certain. Okay. I'm not sure about that. Something okay. good might come out of that. You... Uh, I'm just horrified. They, okay. eat, they eat mice. Although they were not expecting this as the intro. No. Now everybody has the EVG. And by the way, we'll show you a picture maybe, but this, this thing was not a black snake, but I, it was definitely not poisonous. It does Although not matter. it didn't bite me, but 
I he might have been a nice friendly snake. Like we could have just we Okay, it's me or the snake. I will not live with them. I so you. I'm out. Thank you. <laughs> Smart man. So the Real Health Podcast is where we read the latest news uh, in mainstream media. We summarize the articles for you. We tell you what it means and how you should apply it to your life. And our purpose, our goal, our hope is that it will help you to feel better, get stronger, live longer, and feel younger. So if you're done with the snake, we can jump right in. I was done with the snake before it ever entered. I understand. Well, yeah. And did you call someone? You're going to have, I have animal a control? Yes. I guess I guess apparently for snakes you don't call pest control you call animal control. Something we learned. Yeah, and I have their number. Whew. Okay. Well, this one's from New York Times again. New York Times has been our friend recently. A lot of articles in New York Times. This one, uh, the title article says, uh, "Should you get another COVID shot now?" We asked experts about the right time for a booster. Uh, the virus is circulating at high levels across the country. Listen, this promotes fear. Yes. What exactly do they mean at high levels? Because three, four, three years, four years ago, it was different. Right. So anyways, moving on. That and might... it's been downgraded. Like they, right. they, the CDC downgraded COVID. They removed all the precautions and, uh, all the things that we were supposed to do when we had it. And it's so funny because it's so ingrained in us now mm -hmm. that I still have people calling going, I have COVID. I go, oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. Um, but CDC says it's a common cold. Do you know what I mean? It's, uh, and I, I know when people get sick with it, you sometimes the, the symptoms can, can oh, yeah. not you be know, great. 30,000 sure. people a year die from the flu. Uh, so, so right. you know, even the flu is serious if, if someone has health issues. But we have to boost our immune system, people. Like there, there is a way to protect your body from the really severe symptoms. There's things that you can be doing um, to make sure that when you enter a healthcare crisis, whatever it is, whether it's a cold, the flu, the COVID cold, what, whatever, that your body knows how to respond to that, knows how to what to do with it because your body does. But if it's so busy having to deal with all the chemicals and toxins and our um, anxious mind and all of these things, it cannot focus on our immunity. And so you cannot get sick and then start boosting your immune system. That's what most people do. You actually have to step back and you have to decide when you're feeling good, what things can you begin doing to improve the immune uh, system so that when you do get there, your body's not overwhelmed with trying to clean the body out. It can actually heal the body. You know, uh, try to boost your immune system after you get sick is the same as putting on your seatbelt after you crash your car. Oh, what a great analogy. So uh, they're asking, is it time for another shot? Because there's new variants of the virus, which you know, we know the virus mutates regularly. So they're saying it's this fall, there's new, there's new, uh, vaccines specific for the variants that are out well, right now. But they're also so, saying that there's old vaccines that the variant does not exist or is very minimal, but they want you to take it anyway. Experts said the right time for your next COVID shot will depend on your health status and what you're hoping to get from the vaccine. I don't know what anybody would hope to get from the vaccine other than immunity, which they say it doesn't provide. Doctors say that many people may want to wait for the updated vaccines, which have been retooled to better protect against the current uh, dominant strains of the virus. The CDC has uh, recommended that everyone ages six months or older receive an updated shot when they become available. An upcoming vaccine from the biotechnology company Novavax will target JN1, a coronavirus variant that accounted for the bulk of cases in the United States this winter. This winter meaning past winter? Last winter, I should say. The Pfizer and Moderna shots I mean, this fall will target KP2, a newer offshoot of JN1 that's been circulating this summer. The variants responsible for the largest share of cases in the United States right now. KP3 and KP311 are closely related to KP2 
and JN1. I think so we should really change the names more like we do hurricanes. It's easier to identify. Yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. Bob, Jesse, and James. <laughs> They're coming this fall. <laughs> and Maria was here in the winter. <laughs> the, the Sorry, vaccine. Maria. <laughs> <laughs> The vaccines that are currently available, by contrast, target older Omicron variants that fizzled out as JN1 took hold this past winter. Is it, but then the next paragraph goes, but that doesn't mean they're ineffective. Yeah. But, 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 but wait, if that variant has fizzled out and it's no longer prominent, then I don't know about you guys, but my thought then goes, why would I take something that... Because they have a supply they need to use. Oh, okay. Can we just say that? Can we just can we just put that out there? I think transparency has been so lost yeah. that we don't know why they're telling us to do this. Like there's there's something in all vaccines, right? Like an adjuvant that makes the immune kind of works the immune system up, right? Mm -hmm. Like, do you, do you want to do that and put something in that is no longer you need to be protected from? It's a question you need to ask, sure. I think. Yeah, it's a good exactly. question. And, and, you know, I if all the experts agreed, I would I wouldn't dispute it. But it seems like the, the half half the experts you know, I'm talking virologists, immunologists, infectious disease experts. Half of them are on this side of the argument. Half of them are on the other side of the argument. And I go, if they can't agree, how am I supposed to know? Right. And so anyways, make your own decisions. And I just, there's also an opportunity that we could be testing, doing titer testing, right? We could test to see if we have immunities before we give anything. Yeah, why don't, why don't we do that? Like right before flu season, instead of running out and getting a shot, why don't we all go get a test to see what we're actually immune to and what we're not immune right. to and then figure out if we need a shot. Right. That'd be interesting. I, I wonder and what that would They should take a population shift. and just do that. Yeah. Just say, hey, this group, we're going to take a, a thousand people and we're going to just test them to see what their immune level, immunity level is and then watch them through the flu season and see what happens. hundred percent. I'd volunteer for that. I would too. I, I'd be one of them. All right. It says, but when possible... It's best to get a vaccine that closely matches the variants that are circulating, said Dr. Nathan Lowe, an assistant professor of infectious diseases at Stanford University who has studied COVID vaccines. A CDC spokesperson said that certain groups of people at higher risk for severe disease might benefit from getting a shot before the updated vaccines are available. So getting the old one is what they're saying. So if you're old, get the old one first before the new one comes out. That includes those who are 65 or older, pregnant, are immune compromised, or have certain underlying medical conditions who live in long-term care facilities. And I, and I know what you're thinking. Let's not say it. Okay. Uh, they're thinking the same thing, I'm sure. Okay. Uh, those who have never been vaccinated against COVID may also benefit from doing so now rather than waiting for the fall. Now we are in fall, so this article is a little outdated. Uh, getting a shot now might mean you can't get an updated vaccine right when it comes out because the doses need to be spaced out. I'm glad they're saying that because they didn't say that before. Right. Health officials are expected to issue guidance on how long someone should wait between vaccines when the new shots become available. In the meantime, people who are at high risk should talk with their doctors about the ideal interval between vaccines, said... Fikadu Tafis, a virologist at Oregon Health and Science University. That's just a fun name. Fikadu. Fikadu. Getting vaccinated too soon after an infection or previous shot likely won't give you much of an added benefit, said Aubrey Gordon, an infectious disease epidemiologist at the University of Michigan. The CDC has previously said that if you recently had COVID, you can wait three months before getting a dose of the vaccine. So, and this is another thing that's changed recently because they used to say getting, <clears throat> getting it doesn't give you immunity. Now they're saying it does give you immunity. So thankfully, they're now agreeing on that. 
And because the variants spreading this summer are closely related to one another, a recent COVID infection will likely offer substantial protection against the most common strains circulating now. That's pretty good. So if you got sick, you're, you have protection. Uh, Dr. Chin Hong said he often hears from patients who have weddings or summer travel coming up, and they want to know if vaccines will reduce their chance of getting sick and having to cancel. Getting vaccinated with the currently available shots would likely lower your risk of a COVID infection for several weeks. Yeah, but but what people need to realize too is that COVID is not the only virus out there. Mm -hmm. So while you may have some level of protection um, from co from a COVID strain or variant, it doesn't mean that you're protected against everything, right? And protected against everything. Um, I still vote for improving your immune system is the best way to prevent right most well yeah because you're not just protecting against one Correct. disease you're protecting against all disease uh the other issue i have is four years now we've been dealing with this and the vaccine's been around for three and a half mm -hmm. longer i don't know and they still don't know how long of protection you get it says you will be protected for several weeks what does that mean? That's wit that's so vague. And if that's the case, why do you wait three months? There it's where are they getting? I mean, can't well, can't they just study people? Like give someone the shot, test them once a week, every week to see if they're still immune, and then tell me how many weeks of immunity it gives you. But can they do that when they are testing on us? Because these went through such shortened or or no um testing period. Yeah. So it, it does not sound like they're in a testing period with the new ones. They yeah. just made some modifications to account for the new variants. And I'm uh, clearly I'm not a virologist, so I'm oversimplifying, I'm certain. But then like educate us. So tell me why the original vaccines were not um, a protectant as they are to be now. They just reduced, hopefully reduced symptoms. But now you're saying that they actually protect. So what changed in your vaccines from then to now? Mm. Because it doesn't, in my mind, it, it just doesn't, it doesn't all add up. But this, again, goes back to the transparency issue that we have with our healthcare system. And this is not new. Um, but, but because of the lack of transparency, it leaves us with these questions. Right. If you are one to question, and I think we should all be questioning, um, you can question us on our thought processes. If you uh, want, of course. you should be questioning the major medical system because really the bottom line is the majority of people in this system, um, stand to gain financially from you being sick. Yep. And that's, it's sad, but that is the truth. And so you, you have to look at where you're getting your information and then you have to go, okay, who does not stand to gain? Let me see what they say about this topic. And that's how you begin to research so that you can hopefully come to, to some kind of truth, which is usually somewhere in the middle. Just keep in mind, it says that uh, it takes uh, a week or two for antibodies to ramp up. So after you get the vaccine, you're not immune for two weeks. Uh, beyond that, vaccines will continue to guard against serious disease, hospitalization, death, and long COVID for months. Again, not, very vague, just months. You'll be protected for months. Uh, data from the CDC has shown that people who receive an updated vaccine uh, after they become available, uh, after they became available last year, were roughly 54% less likely to get uh, COVID from mid-September 2023 to January 2024. Yeah. Those who do get a shot now uh, may still want to get the updated vaccine down the line in a few months, Dr. Chin Hong said. Whether or not you get the vaccine now, he said, you will definitely want added protection heading into the colder months when cases are expected to rise even further. Um, but that, but again, like Dr. Chin Hung said, you'll probably lower your risk of a COVID infection for several weeks and then it skips a paragraph and then it says maybe a couple months. So again, what is it? Uh, I, I, well, we're just reporting. 
on this, please do your research. Make your own decision. Uh, we are not going to tell you get it or don't get it. We never will. Nope. We just want to give you uh, the ask pers questions. our perspective. And, and our, just get you to ask questions. This, this is our opinions, our perspectives that we share with you. And these are articles you may not have time to read or or, or maybe you don't have someone to discuss them with. Well, we, we'll discuss them for you. Now, on the other side of this uh, article is um some it is an old one this is from several months ago eight nine months ago uh and this is from health news florida uh, obviously this didn't hit a lot of mainstream articles so mm -hmm. the surgeon general of so you know there's the there's the u.s surgeon general and then the states have their own surgeon general and they make decisions about health and trends and so on they make recommendations so the so florida's now a lot of people are thinking florida is uh, a different planet compared to Earth, uh, just because they do things a little differently, and and uh, you know just like Kansas that sued Pfizer, did they sued Pfizer, I think they sued Pfizer. Uh, so, anyways, Florida Surgeon General calls for halt in COVID mRNA vaccines against federal guidance. So, there the Surgeon General is going against. Uh, so his name is Dr. Joseph Ladapo. Again, raised concerns about the delivery of nucleic acid. Uh, contaminants in the vaccine and the rise of DNA integration risk into cell. DNA. Sorry, the risk of DNA integration into cells. And again, the FDA stood behind the science against the recommendations of federal health agencies. In a statement released Wednesday by the Florida Department of Health, Ladapo referred to a December 6 letter to a U.S. food to the U.S. Food and Drug Administration, in which the FDA, that's our favorite, favorite three letters, um, in which he raised concerns about nucleic acid contaminants. Nucleic acid is RNA, basically. In the Pfizer and Moderna COVID-19 mRNA vaccines and the unique risks posed by DNA integration, the FDA had refuted Adapo's concerns in a December 14th 14 response and stated that based on a thorough assessment of the entire manufacturing process, FDA is confident in the quality, safety, and effectiveness of the COVID-19 vaccines. This is what's funny because you read that and you go, oh, they did their research. They did a thorough assessment. But well, what did they assess? Look at this. It says they assessed the manufacturing process. Yeah. Well, Dr. Ladapo didn't question the manufacturing process. He's saying that what is in there can affect your DNA. And he's a doctor just like they are. And he's concerned about people. And it's not like he's he's not a, nothing against primary carers, but he he's not in his local, you know, clinic seeing patients. He's the state's. Surgeon General, mm -hmm. that holds some clout. There's a reason why he got there, right? Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's it's like it's like saying, um, I don't know, uh, um, th this brand of car explodes when when you drive it faster than eighty miles an hour, right. and then they, instead of looking at the cars that are exploding, they go, no, no, we looked at the manufacturing of the car, and everything's right. I go, okay, it doesn't matter. They're manufacturing it right, but why is it exploding? Well, here's the other thing. I go, how many times have we read articles where there was a major concern about a chemical in our food? And they go, no, no, I'm pretty sure it's fine. It's going to take a lot more for us to, to really dive into this and investigate it to determine it's not safe. Yeah. We're not going to do it. It would take a lot. Yeah. So let's keep doing things that are unhealthy that we know or, are dangerous. Or they, or they say we're going to hire an advisory committee of experts and we're going to let them advise on this. And then we'll, we'll, we'll read the article a few months later. The advisory committee comes back and says, this is not safe. And the FDA, FDA goes, we'll take your advisory, your advisement into account. Right. But they don't do a thing about but it. But we need to research it more. We need to research it more. I go, yeah. Why, why did you hire an advisory committee? But I'm like, why did they go through so much to get this approved and go, no, 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 it's fine. I I just, I I question it so much. I um, Next week, we're going to dive into, I want everyone to hear a video that I watched about a woman who's really. We have some guests next week. So oh, sorry. Would, the, week the week after. The week after. Um, 
and I'm really excited for everyone to hear it because um, it, it it's going to it's going to blow your mind. I mean, I know what I know, and it still was mind blowing to me just to hear about food wise what we are allowing, what we don't ship out versus what we feed our own, you know, people in our in our the United States. It's just mind blowing. So, anyway, uh, FDA. We can do better than this. The FDA further stated <laughs> that with over a billion doses of the mRNA vaccines administered, no safety concerns related to residual DNA have been identified. The oh. U.S. accounts for more than 670 million doses. They, they, they're just not talking about them. However, in uh, Wednesday's statement iterating his concerns, Ladapo called, I want to call him Dr. Ladapo, uh, called the FDA's explanation inadequate and said the FDA has provided no evidence that these risks have been assessed to ensure safety. This is in quotation marks. The FDA stands firmly behind the safety, effectiveness, and manufacturing quality of the approval and authorized of the approved and authorized COVID-19 vaccines and respectfully disagrees with the Florida Surgeon General's opinion. It is simply a fact that millions of lives have been saved because of the COVID-19 mRNA vaccines, which most Americans undergoing vaccination have received, said FDA spokesperson Sherry Duval jones Unlike some vaccines, messenger RNA or mRNA vaccines do not contain pieces of the virus. Instead, it gives cells instruction on how to make the spike protein found on the surface of the coronavirus, prompting the body to create antibodies that will fight the virus if infected. The delivery is done via lipid nanoparticles, which are easily absorbed by cells. Lipid nanoparticles are an efficient vehicle for delivery of the mRNA in the COVID-19 vaccines into human cells and may therefore be an equally efficient vehicle for delivering contaminant DNA into human cells, Ladapa wrote in the December 6 letter. In the FDA's December response to Ladapo, Peter Marks, director of the Center for Biologics Evaluation and Research, stated that it was implausible that the minute amounts of small DNA fragments present could find their way into the nucleus of these cells. Well, at one time, they didn't think you should wash your hands between delivering children, but yet here we are. That's right. That's right. Uh, appointed in 2021, Ladapo has drawn criticism from federal health officials. They're trying to discredit him. Mm -hmm. uh, health officials and scientific community for his statement on co uh, vaccines and the COVID-19 pandemic. Florida became the first state to recommend against the COVID-19 vaccine for healthy children, contrary to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention's recommendation that most Americans six months and older receive booster shots. Serious adverse events from COVID-19 vaccines are rare and are far outweighed by the benefits of these vaccines for every age group. A Tampa Bay Times analysis also found that Ladapo recommended that young men should not get the vaccine due to risk of cardiac-related deaths after Florida health officials had omitted key COVID-19 vaccine data. A group of epidemiologists and professors called the guidance badly flawed. Well, there you go. They cannot agree, and so I don't know what's right. So I wanted to find out what some of the most queried health topics were. Um, I like to make sure that we're, you know, talking about things that people are interested in. Being relevant. Yeah, I, I want us to, to really be touching on the things that are important to you, not just things that are important to us. So I, I did some digging today, and um, let's, let's see what what some of the, <laughs> what came up. So what are the three biggest health problems um, right now? Would you say, what would you guess? Top three health problems in US. Heart disease, cancer, obesity, diabetes. That's right. Heart disease, diabetes, and cancer are considered to be the top three um, health issues um, today. 
I, I want us to think about these things as we're looking at what are the big uh, issues in health. Um, I want us to think about those because um, most of what I'm seeing are what we would classify as lifestyle diseases or um, I guess that's the best the best way to put it. They're lifestyle diseases, right? I, we don't like to admit to that, but they are. Um, what are the biggest, what is the biggest challenge facing American healthcare today? What do you think the biggest problems in healthcare? I mean, unhealthy habits and behaviors. You know, it's funny because I thought we would see things like, you know, heart disease is the biggest issue or, you know, but that's not what we saw. Uh, physical activity and nutrition, uh, top overweight, uh, obesity, tobacco, substance abuse, HIV AIDS. I would not have thought that that in this day and age would be considered one of our top 10 health issues. Wow. Mental health, injury and violence and environmental quality. So those are what, um, they're saying are our top 10 health issues. Now I want you to look at these outside of like mental health, injury, violence, um, uh, and environmental quality. Some of those we can't control, but all of these others are controllable challenges that we're facing, right? Physical activity and nutrition. If we just got up and moved more and went against what, um, our government is telling us is healthy and okay to eat, if we just stayed away from that, I guarantee you, we would take care of the overweight obesity. Like those two issues are solved by the top uh, issue. Tobacco, again, that that's totally preventable. Substance abuse. I mean, we've made it legal, so that's going to be a harder one to step, step away from. So I found that to be fascinating. Um, what are the most searched health topics on Google right now? Weight loss. Mm, it's it's discussed, but not not the highest. Interesting. How to lower blood pressure? Mm. Something we need to talk a little bit about. Uh, what is keto? Hmm. People want to know what keto is. We hear it all the time. Uh, we can talk about keto down the road. Um, how to get rid of hiccups? That's the third most searched topic. Mm -hmm. And they want to know what causes. When's the last hiccups? time you had hiccups? It's been a little while. It has to do with the diaphragm, right? The diaphragm. Um, it's all theory. Really? Yeah. Or yeah. or or uh, high carbon dioxide levels in your blood, or or low over over oxygenation of the blood. Some people say that's why they breathe in a bag mm -hmm. to get rid of hiccups, because it um, it lowers your oxygen, increases carbon dioxide huh. when you breathe in a bag, because you're breathing back your own exhale. Oh, over time, it reduces oxygen, and you stop hiccuping. Oh, I don't wow. know. Some people say it's a neurologic thing with the vagus nerve or the, sorry, the phrenic nerve, the nerve to the diaphragm. I heard that the diaphragm has like a, it, um, spasms and that's what causes the hiccup. I, I can't remember the last time I had hiccups. Yeah. It's been a long time for me too. You, you would think if it's the third most searched topic, it would happen it'd be something everybody has every day. Okay. So we're going to dig into hiccups, people. I think it's important. Uh, it's important to you. It's I'm, important to us. I'm sure they'll, <laughs> they'll come up with a drug now for, for I'm sure they're working a on vaccine it. For hiccups. a vaccine for hiccups. How long does the flu last? People want to know what causes kidney stones? What is HPV? HPV is human papillona, papillo, papillona or papilloma. papilloma virus. Thank you. Um, how to lower cholesterol and how many calories should I eat a day? Wow. So I can answer all of those if you want. Well, we might just have to come back through and just do that. What is Was it the flu? How long the flu lasts? Mm -hmm. Depends on your immune system. If you're healthy, two days. Yep. If you're unhealthy, seven to 10 days. Yep. If you're really unhealthy, it'll kill you. There's the answer. We just answered that one. There you go. That's, that's great. Um, popular topics right now, uh, health topics discussed, diabetes, coronavirus, drugs and supplements, diets, uh, food and eating, mental wellness, sexual health, eye health, huh, eye health, who knew? It's important. Hmm. Um, I thought this was fascinating and I don't think that we'll have time for this today, um, but I do want to um, save, I, I pulled an article regarding this. It says, what are the three biggest issues in our healthcare system today or in healthcare today? 
Um, and there's a great article on this. It was a little bit older article, I think back uh, 2018. Um, but I did look up some of the stats and I did uh, look at what they were uh, predicting as far as like healthcare spending and whatnot. They were spot on. Uh, it was really awesome. This was like a time travel uh, article for me because I got to see what they were predicting. And then I'm like, ooh, it's already passed. So I can actually see if if we uh, hit that. Scary. We did. <laughs> um, so the uh, bi three biggest issues in healthcare today, uh, people say, are preventable medical errors. I think that's been on the list for years. Poor uh, amiable uh, or amenable uh, mortality rates and lack of transparency. Um, fourth was uh, difficulty finding a good doctor. So there's eight issues um, or eight major problems in the U.S. healthcare system. And while this is a few years old, it's funny because there's some of the same issues that we looked at in articles 10 years ago. They're the same ones that are popping up today. So um, we'll save that and go through that next time. The one difficult difficulty is finding a good doctor. No one even knows what a good doctor is. Well, because what we do now, and this is actually discussed in, in the article, is we're looking, we're not looking at what they've, um, what their knowledge base is, what their mastery is in, um, what they've done with their career. All we look at is their ratings, right? We, he's really kind. They got me through really quickly. I had a very little wait time. They didn't forget me in the room. That's happened to me before. Um, it, you know what I mean? Like those, I was forgotten in a room when I was pregnant. I, I about that. lost my stuff you should have seen me out in the hallway going today is this going to happen today here i am seven months pregnant i was not a happy camper um so anyway here's the the one that i found to be probably the most um thought provoking for me because the one thing that we hear as far as issues for um world health is climate right we uh, pollution uh, of our air climate and while i'm not saying that that can't be or shouldn't be a concern i go what is actually really more impactful for our health right now is it really air pollution um or is it food related should we be more concerned about our soil and the chemicals that are used in our foods, or should we be more concerned about our air quality? Because I feel like if our air quality was so horrific, asthma would be through the roof. You know, other um, lung-related diseases would be astronomical, yeah, but that's and, not the case. That's how it was in Iran. I, I remember in Iran, uh, before everything went unleaded with fuel, that that happened in the '90s. It wasn't that long ago. Right. Everything was leaded. There was so much lead in the air that people's kidneys were shutting down. Right. Many many people in Iran had to be on dialysis because there was lead. They were breathing lead into their bloodstream. Uh, so so that's that's poor air quality. Right. Is when just by going outside they were getting sick. Right. This is not that. Correct. Like if there's an explosion of a bio lab and they tell you don't go outside and turn off your AC, there's air pollution issues. Correct. I would say leave the area completely, but that's me. Um, but what they say is the biggest predictor of health. Stay with me. The biggest predictor of health. What is it? Nutrition. So, so again, it, so, so it's environment, but it's internal environment. It's your Correct. inside environment. Correct. And I think that is so important because um, this is where, uh, as we've read in many articles, that the FDA has failed our country miserably. Um, and the video that I'm going to show in a couple of weeks is going to talk to that. And I hope um, you guys are all blown away by the check information for copyright as I, laws and so on to see if it's okay it, it's fine it's been used on a lot of other videos and people are doing reactions to okay. it and it's it's amazing stuff so we'll have that on in two weeks and then we'll process through a little bit more of the eight problems with the u.s healthcare system um i i think it's i think we need to be pushing more for changes in in that area and i'm uh, happy to say there's a few people that are really proactive in this area and holding, you know, the FDA and our government's feet to the fire going, why are you allowing this in our country when it's not allowed everywhere else? And we're okay, 
taking out all of these toxic chemicals from food that we are shipping and exporting out to the UK and Australia and all these other places, but yet we throw that in there for our people. Hmm. Like I, it is, it is mind blowing to me that these companies are willing to remove this. Like you go to McDonald's in the UK, you know what their fries, what the three ingredients are? Three ingredients. One of them is salt. Yeah, which is optional. So it's potatoes and oil. The same French fries in the US have how many ingredients? I think it's upwards of like 15 or 20. I, I, it was 11. Okay. I was talking to Dr. Michael about it. Gosh. It says French fries in, in fast food restaurant, in a specific fast food restaurant in the US, have 11 ingredients. The same fast food restaurant in Europe only has three ingredients. It's wild. So it's probably potato, salt, and <laughs> oil. Oil. <laughs> That's what it was. I like saw the ingredient list. So uh, uh, they are not watching out for us. They are not helping us be healthy. They are not giving us the information that we need to make good decisions. And it's time that that stops. So here we come. Preach. Get off my soapbox now. All right. I'm staying on the soapbox. I'm not letting. No. I'm just gonna step off because I gotta go do some real estate you stuff go, now. You gotta go. Yep, yeah, I understand. All <laughs> right. Well, we'll be back though. We'll be back. We're gonna have two gentlemen here next week. We're gonna talk about functional uh, movements and patterns of your body. How to make sure you uh, you you basically stop aging physically yes. and, and you know musculoskeletal issues and so on. It's gonna be amazing. They're very very knowledgeable people. We're looking forward to having them here. Yep. And um, thank you all for joining us. We love and appreciate you greatly. You've been so supportive. And um, we'll be back soon. So right. take care. God bless. See you next time.